You're watching ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Share and subscribe. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. This is Rob. This video, I'm going to do my review for Pacific Rim The Black. Before I get into it, I want to remind you guys, I am streaming tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be streaming on Twitch, and I will leave the link to that in the description so you guys have an easier time to find me. But also keep your eye on YouTube. There is a good chance it will be streaming on YouTube. It's just that I have to use a proxy. I can't create a stream on YouTube. I can't upload videos on YouTube right now. I'm actually doing it through Twitch. I upload it on Twitch, and then I can export it to YouTube. I don't even know if these videos are going to have a thumbnail. So just keep an eye out for that. What I would do is go to the description, click the link to Twitch, follow me there. I will be starting at 8 p.m. If you don't see me live on YouTube, I will be on Twitch. We have a lot to talk about tonight. So hopefully I'll see you guys there. Pacific Rim The Black. Fantastic anime. Love the first season. I am so happy because I've been very disappointed with a lot of the anime I've been watching lately. Not lately, but... I used to watch a lot of anime when I was younger, and I really haven't gotten into a lot of the more recent anime. Then I started again with Godzilla, the trilogy, the anime trilogy, which was very disappointing. Um, I didn't even see the last one, and I have, z I have zero interest in watching it. And then um, there was one anime I watched called The Seven Deadly Sins. I did enjoy that one. And then, you know, I don't have time to watch all of them, so when I do watch one, I always hope that it's good, and this one is good. Good, man. Oh, my God. I was surprised. So, basically, the Black... Pacific Rim, the Black's about two siblings who are on a journey to find their parents. And these siblings, along their journey, find a training Jaeger, which has no weaponry, but they utilize it to kind of traverse the land faster and find their parents faster. And what the Black is... Basically, the Black is a protocol, right? So, basically, at this point... Australia has been run over with kaiju and they initiate the protocol of the black, which means Australia is going to be blacked out. It's not basically going to count anymore. Everything on Australia, all the shatter domes, all the bases, all the Jaegers that are not required are going to be left behind, but they're going to be hidden. So that way they're not compromised. And anyone who doesn't make it to, I think it was Sydney, will not get out. And basically it's blackout. No one's going to return. No one. That's it. Australia is gone. It's over. So that's what that basically means. The black is a protocol. And basically, their, their parents were Jaeger pilots. And they were trying to get people to the black, to the location to escape. But unfortunately, when they went out for help, they never returned. And then we catch up with our siblings five years later. And they're living in a valley somewhere in the desert. But this certain valley has almost like an oasis, right? They, there's vegetation. They're able to survive there with other people. They're growing crops, things of that nature. And, you know, the siblings, what I like about them is that they have a very strong bond, but they're also conflicted with each other. Tyler wants to wait around for his parents to return. He's kind of in denial. And Haley is understanding that they may just be gone and it's time to move forward. And then from there, we follow them on their journey. Along the way, they meet other survivors and they meet a, a young lady named May. And May is a very cool character. She's one of my favorites. Um, she's a bit conflicted within herself because she has a very clouded past. And she's teamed up with a, the leader of that group named Shane. And Shane is, is kind of like what I consider the governor of the show. So I got out of this show like this is Walking Dead meets Kaiju, which is a great comment. And I'm talking the good parts of Walking Dead. I'm talking those first few seasons where, where it was at a fever pitch. And, you know, without getting into too much, I'll do a little spoiler section and I'll warn you guys before we get into that. But the show stands on its own feet. You know, it is taking place after the Uprising movie, after Pacific Rim 2. And while they do refer to some things in the movies, the, the show doesn't rely on the movies to kind of run it. It stands on its own two feet. It's got its own story, and the story is centered around these two siblings. The other thing I got to say is I am so happy to finally watch a, uh, uh, anything, whether it's a movie, a show, or in this case, an anime, where those key teenage characters are not annoying. They're not. They have treated these characters as if they would, how they would react if they were really in the situation. They had to grow up fast. They're fairly mature for their age and they're, they take chances. You know, they, they go out there, they risk their lives. Um, and I like that. I, I like that. I, these characters are not annoying. Uh, like I said, May is a great character. I think her age in the show is like 19 
and then you have um, the siblings. And Haley, I would say, is around 15 or 14. And I would say Tyler is probably around 17 or 18. And, you know, they they look out for each other. I, I love the bond between the siblings. I really do. They, they are well bonded. And the story establishes that bond through, um, you know, like reflecting, like going back and showing you past, you know, like how they, you know, how Tyler got to be a cadet, how he was an ace student. And, um and how Haley was was missing her brother and things of that nature. And there is, and don't get me wrong, there are Kaiju and, and, and Jaeger battles. Uh, there's quite a bit of them, probably, uh, but it, not, not, but not to the point where it's overbearing. Like that, that is not what makes the show good. The story and the journey makes the show good. Now, throughout their journey, they also run into a little boy who they name Boy, and he looks like he's been experimented on. They find him in some sort of capsule in, in this fluid and they, they actually break him free and he kind of follows them and you learn that this boy has special powers in fact significant powers and again I don't want to get into I'll, I'll talk about it in the spoiler section after this but you know he they, there's a bond there with him and Haley and he protects Haley and, and he protects both of them actually but there's a special connection with him and Haley and um, something happens to him at the end I'll get into in a few minutes that's pretty big but the show is great. It is really, really good. I was pleasantly surprised. I went into the show feeling indifferent. I wasn't expecting anything bad, but I didn't have high expectations. And I was pleasantly surprised. I I was only originally intending to watch the first two episodes, then do a review, but I got hooked. I got hooked. It was really, really good. The animation is fantastic. Uh, it never feels like it's very, very um, vibrant when it needs to be. And it changes the, the you know, the color tones and everything are really good depending on what the scene is and what message they're trying to convey through the anime. Uh, I thought that was very well. It, it was very streamlined in that aspect. And so was the story and the show itself. Very, very well technically sound anime, in my opinion. Now, I'm not an expert, but I've seen other anime that it looks choppy. It's not very streamlined. The The theme and the aperture of everything doesn't seem to... Uh, not the aperture. It's another one. The aesthetics, I should say. Uh, don't seem to transfer over or when they're changing scenes, it doesn't, the coloration and things like that don't match or are not correct. It's kind of hard to explain via words. I just felt like this one, it just kind of flowed good, man. It just felt good. And the story was good. It wasn't slow. It was well-paced. I was so impressed, man. I, it's been a while since I got into a good anime and I was, I was into this. Now I'm going to talk about spoilers. So if you don't want to know spoilers, but I'm sure most of you have watched it by now. Uh, but I am going to talk about spoilers now, so you might want to leave. A few seconds. Okay, here we go. So um, they do mention and name drop Stacker Pentecost, uh, Raleigh, and also uh, Herc, uh, Hercules, Herc, uh, I think it's Hennon, I think his name is. But if you don't know who I'm referring to, if you remember Pacific Rim, Herc piloted Striker Eureka with his brother. His brother was the one, the younger cocky one that got into a fight with Raleigh in the early part of the movie. And Herc was the one who ended up with like, a, uh, he ended up injuring his arm during a fight. And then Stacker had to uh, drift with uh, with his younger brother, with the Herc's younger brother in Striker Eureka towards the end of the movie. So yeah, it was really, really, really good. <laughs> uh, really, really cool stuff. And they name dropped that during a scene where Tyler has to save his sister, but in order to do so, he has to pilot the Jaeger by himself, which they refer to as ghost drifting. I do love the AI in the um, in in the, the the Jaeger they have, which the Jaeger is called Atlas Destroyer, and her name is Loa. And the the lady who does her voice, I forget her name now, but she's done a lot of video games. She's done a lot of anime. I think the last video game she did that was pretty big was Persona. Um, she's also done a lot of Marvel voiceovers and as well as DC. She's pretty pretty famous in the terms of voice actors. So that was cool to see. I forget her name, but I, I recognized her when I looked it up and I was like, oh, that's her. So that was really cool. Um, also, another spoiler is if you remember Uprising, Uprising had that Kaiju hybrid, uh, like the Kaiju Jaeger hybrid. Well, they have another hybrid on this show, which pops up from time to time, doesn't really get into a confrontation with the siblings. Up until like episode six, which I believe is called Boneyard. And that's where you kind of learn a little bit more about this boy. And he is like super powerful. And then later you turn, f turns out that the boy can transform into like a mini Kaiju and he becomes a Kaiju and he protects Haley from 
Copperhead, which is like the protagonist kaiju of the show, which has quickly become my favorite kaiju in the Pacific Rim universe. Before him, it was Leatherback, but man, Copperhead is so cool. He looks cool. He's a Category 4. He's big. He's like a like an Anguirus, but with no spikes. And he pops up throughout the show a lot as the main kaiju protagonist. So, um, and then at the end, at the very end of the show, the, you know, we're not sure if Boy can transform back into his human form. So they pan up to a building and you see these kaiju dogs. Now, these kaiju dogs did show up throughout the show periodically. And they're looking down at May, Haley, and Tyler while they're looking at Boy who's stuck under a building. And um, one of them say, uh, sisters, the kaiju messiah has come. And I'm like, what? Kaiju messiah? What the hell? And that's kind of how the season ends. Uh, I would say May is my favorite character. Uh, she's really cool. She she has a lot of conflicting feelings about leaving the survivor group she was with and, and this character, Shane, who she, she kind of views him as a father figure. And, you know, she kind of learns that he basically kidnapped her and almost brain, you know, like brainwashed her into believing that he saved her. And it's a really, really cool show. And I'm looking forward to season two, which was greenlit. Back in 2018 when they announced it. So we're definitely getting season two. And I can't wait. But anyway, guys, let me know. What did you think of Pacific Rim the Black? I thought it was great. I loved it. And I'm hoping you guys liked it too. Because I thought it was really good. And uh, let me know in the comments. Until next time, this is Rob signing off for ETN. Where we don't do news. We just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Thank you for watching ETN. Click here to watch more content. Don't forget to leave a comment. Also, make sure you like and share this video. If you want to know when the next video is up, click the notification bell next to the subscribe button. And most of all, make sure to click that subscribe button for regular content.